So bike maps is considered a crowdsource tool or sometimes in geography, we call these volunteer geographic um, projects, the EGI, volunteer geographic information. And it just means that people from a wide range of places, the public basically can contribute data to it. But in order to get people contributing, we have to do lots of things to promote it. So, um, you know, we've reached out to news outlets and they featured the work. We have a pretty active Twitter account, but we've also done some fun things like um, we put little in these water bottles. I've got one here I'm putting on a bike. Um, it's like a clear orange water bottle and inside it has a little note that says, Tay, you've been, um, you've been selected to improve bicycling safety. And then it, it asks people to go and report to bikemaps.org. And then my colleague Megan Winters over here has a bike seat cover. So in well, so these wouldn't be very popular in Santa Barbara, but um, these are rain seat covers. So we use them in Vancouver, which has a climate much like Seattle, pretty rainy. And so we just put these on parked bikes, the seat covers. Actually, these kind of seat covers are super popular in Europe too. Banks and stuff brand on them, and then they leave them on parked bikes, but. We branded them here with bike maps and yeah put them put them around and then people sort of know about us and and um, report so who is it that reports to bike maps so one of the things you always have to be aware of when you have a crowdsource project um, is that the people that report are people usually with access to technology so in this case it's going to be bicyclists primarily who um are really passionate about their bikes and who also have the time and resources to spend reporting and access to the internet. And because so much of the promotion that we do is through social media, it's gonna be mostly you know people on social media. So we've always been really concerned with, are we getting a representative sample? So this gives us a, um, some ideas about that. So these, the, to the far, left you see crd od cycling trips so this is the capital regional district which is the city of victoria and surrounding area be sort of like saying santa barbara county their origin and destination bicycling trips so they do a survey every year of who's riding bikes and how people are getting around and so you can see um, males on one side and females on the other so we definitely see more males bicycling in the capital region um, with the women sort of age 25 to 34, bicycling similar amounts as their male counterparts, but then as um, people age, it seems like there's a higher proportion of men that continue to ride. And how does that compare to, so what you would want is at a minimum, you would want the people contributing to bike maps to be similar in demographics to the people that are bicycling. So we looked at who's visiting the website and then who's reporting data. And so we see that you know, who's visiting the website, we do have more men overall that are um, visiting the website, but the trends and data are kind of similar with maybe more men in the 25 to 34 year old range. Probably this has to do um, with it being kind of a university focused project. So I think we got the message out to students pretty, pretty well. And then we look at who is reporting incidents on bike maps and we see similar trends to who's visiting but but maybe with that 25 to 34 year old men male um, demographic really standing out. So we also are curious about do men and women if, if we have more men riding and we have more men also contributing data what are there differences in age and gender with how people report and with the kinds of incidents that people are reporting. So these are maps that we made would show um, basically collisions and near misses reported to bike maps by men and women. And there's a lot of similarities, but you can see for the men, the male map, there is um, more reporting that happens sort of to the north of the map. In this case, this is again for Victoria and um, those northern areas are kind of recreational routes that people ride for exercise and for fun, whereas down in the south, that's more the city center. And um, there's, yeah, more consistent reporting between men and women. So what we kind of think we're seeing is that 
yeah, there's more male reports. So you have bigger hotspots um, showing up, but the, the trends within the city are pretty similar between the men and the women. Whereas if you go to the sort of more recreational routes, you do send, you do see different reports um, from, from men. So I think it's just really whenever, you know, when historically, when we've done these kind of projects, somebody sits down and says, okay, what's the way that we're gonna collect a representative sample of people's opinions or people's experience? And there's a sampling scheme. With crowdsource projects and volunteer geographic information, we don't have somebody sitting down thinking about how representative is the sample. So it just becomes really important that we compare all of our maps we compare the patterns that are coming from the different groups and we think about who's missing or who's not included in contributing to this data. So, you know, who's not included is in the bike maps data are people who don't ride their bikes. We're not getting good information from them about their safety concerns. And they're some of the most important group because we want to make things safe enough that people who don't bike have access. And then, you know, people who, have low income are less likely to have the time and money to spend on technology. They're not going to use their cell phone time, um, the, the data on their phone to contribute data. Homeless folks who are often um, having to move through the city in some of the least safe conditions. And anyone who feels nervous about um, being tracked is unlikely to want to contribute information to this. So. We really um, have been thinking about that more and more. And I think it's really through sort of strategic partnerships that we'll be able to reach some of those audiences. And we just need to do it in a different way. We can't just put it on Twitter and think we're gonna capture all the groups. So this is a really important issue um, for mapping in general. And something that will come up throughout this course is who's included and who's excluded on the map. And you know, particularly as we think about Black Lives Matter and racial justice in the, the US, in North America, I think um, we need to be responsible mappers and be really keeping an eye on this.